Thank you. Please go ahead. This okay. opportunity to present my works. It was done with um, Andres Garcia, Kirill Bandarenko, Svilia Plokining, and Josef Pradler. And first of all, as you already heard from previous talks, and of course, you know that our standard model is, is not complete, at least these phenomena uh, we have, such as neutrino masses, dark matter, that is the most interesting for this symposium and baryon symmetry. And um, we perhaps need some new particle to explain this phenomena. And um, the reason why we still didn't discover this particle is that perhaps our experiments uh, didn't reach such heavy particles. So we pushed the energy frontier, uh, but we still, still didn't see um, this particle because it's heavier than we can probe. But there could be another possibility that these particles interact so weakly with our standard models that um, we are not able to probe them. And it calls uh, intensity frontier experiment when we increase the intensity of our experiments. And um, these uh, particles could live in so-called dark sector and um, uh, they connected with the standard model particles via so-called portals. And there are several portals. And in this talk, I will consider vector portal or dark photon. So a uh, dark photon uh, mixes with ordinary photon via this term. And uh, the same as with ordinary neutrinos, uh, because of this term, uh, they can just oscillate. So ordinary photons can oscillate into dark photons and vice versa. And uh, this dark photon, they have some mass. And um, there were a lot of searches uh, at colliders and in space to constrain this model. And in this talk, I will concentrate on these parts. It still looks quite empty. And just, I will briefly um, discuss some theory. Uh, so dark photon could oscillate into ordinary photons and vice versa. And in vacuum, it's, um, it's proportional to the coupling squared. And it's quite surprised because this coupling um, is very, very small. But when a photon propagates in a medium, in a plasma, then uh, another effect happens and effectively photons became massive because they interact with charged particles and their mass is given uh, at the first order to this expression. So the mass of the photon is proportional to the square root of electron number density. And because of that, uh, this oscillation could enter into a resonant regime where the probability of this conversion is much larger than the coupling constant and is given by this expression. Now the question is, um, do we have such resonant events in space? In, and the answer is yes. For relatively small masses, uh, we do have uh, such um, resonances if, of course, dark photon exists. So starting from a very high redshift, um, after um, the CMBD coupling, our universe is homogeneous. And uh, what is even more interesting for us, it's neutral up to some extent. But we do have some small fraction of free electrons. And therefore, the effective mass that is proportional to the square root of electron number density is de decreases with the expansion of the unit because the number density increases as well. But at small redshifts, uh, we know that ionization happens, and it happens from perhaps redshift 6 to 20. We don't know when exactly, but at this period of time, the ionization happens, and the number of electrons increased orders of magnitude, and therefore the effective mass increases as well. And what is even more interesting is that we have galaxies with a lot of electrons in them and other structures, and uh, therefore this uh, effective mass oscillates 
uh, not oscillates, but it fluctuates around the average value. And what it means for us is that if we take a very high mass, then we don't have any resonance, so we don't expect any effects. But when we decrease the mass, we could uh, have one resonance, or what is even more interesting, when we increase it even further, then we could have hundreds of resonances. And it could lead to some observable effects. Because um, photons can oscillate into dark photons, uh, it modifies the spectra of uh, photons. And one of the best um, studied example is the cosmic microwave background, because we know that it's to a very, very high precision. It's a black body spectrum. And if we have these oscillations, then uh, we would modify the spectrum. We could add more photons, so I'm going to remove more photons from its spectrum. And the CMV uh, comes to us from all the directions, so it's all sky survey. And uh, naively, we would expect that galaxies, say, take a lot of part of space in the universe, but it's not so. And the, most of the parts that uh, photon trails to us, it's in, uh, in so-called uh, cosmic web in, uh, that is filled with filaments. And this plot, uh, these blue dots, it's several radii of galaxies in five megaparsec uh, slice. So you can see that uh, it's a very small fraction of um, Mm, the whole universe. So it's from uh, simulation. And as I uh, discussed, uh, so we expect that because of conversion, um, the spectra will change. And um, I will mention two possible effects, so-called spectral distortions. Uh, when the um, fires measured to very high precision that our CMB spectrum is black body spectrum. And uh, if you take the CMB spectrum, and because of this conversion, what we measured here at Earth will be slightly modified by this factor one minus the probability of conversion. And uh, also, we know that to a very high precision, uh, our universe is homogeneous up to like 10 to the minus five. And if we add or rem remove uh, some photons, then uh, it will add some anisotropy to the temperature uh, fluctuation that is measured very well by Planck. And what we can do is that um, we can put some uh, strong constraints um, on the dark photon when it propagates through the medium. And uh, we need, for that, we need to take many line of sights and average this line of sight and average the probability and find its mean and dispersion. In this way, we can constrain um, using common virus data and Planck. And uh, there are two possible uh, approaches that uh, um, was done more or less at the same time. Um, so um, from our side, our group uh, used the Eagle simulations. And from these simulations, we constructed uh, many line of sight and then work with this data. And as a group, um, uh, instead of uh, taking um, simulations, they, um, they use an analytic formula that took into account all the homogeneities at a small redshift. And um, as um, uh, we see uh, at this plot, we have comparable results. So at this plot, uh, we constrain the dark photon um, from in virus using the Eagle simulation. And um, th this group uses the analytical approach. And you see that the results go quite closely. And we have a projection to the future experiment, Pixie. So to summarize, um, so uh, our universe is not empty. It's filled with intergalactic medium. And uh, um, this intergalactic medium, it's a good prop of new physics. And for example, CMB is a very good source uh, that could put a very strong constraints on physics. Um, and even though that um, from experimentalist point of view, this electron number density is very small because um, here at Earth, 
we would call this vacuum, but um, it's enough at cosmic distances to make photon massive and uh, it could give rise to some observable effects. For example, um, one of the models that uh, explains the Edison anomaly uh, when a dark matter particle decays into two dark photons, um, uh, even this approach, we constrain this um, model, uh, we constrain a large parameter of this model. Thank you very much.